Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Today we're going to be showcasing how Liquid Frameworks and FieldFX, as well as Boomi, allow synchronization of information going from FieldFX to SAP for invoicing information, as well as the scenario where you have customer master information inside of SAP that's not yet inside of FieldFX. So to demonstrate what we're going to be hopping along is just taking a look specifically first the data point of information in that customer master inside of SAP. So that's our use case number one. Boomi is going to be utilized to pull that information out of SAP and transform that into the target side of field FX. So with that, let's actually get started with the actual demonstration. First, what I'm going to showcase is an SAP screen. And SAP is going to be able to show all of the different customers that are inside of our environment, just starting with CIR. I'll circle on that one. And today we're going to be focusing on Cirrus Ops out there in the Houston, Texas area. This particular customer, as I go through, you can see this information is coming across, is down there in East Greenway Plaza, Suite 405. That's the customer master information that we do have on the SAP side. Switching over into field FX, I'm just going to do a quick search for Cirrus, showcase all of the different customers that are or are not within there. You'll see Cirrus, you'll see Cirrus Trucking, you'll see the, the well completion as well. What you don't see is Cirrus Ops. What we're going to utilize is the Boomi platform to take advantage of having different applications and different systems be able to do an integration. So I'm pulling this information out of SAP, transforming that information into what FieldFX is expecting. So I'm just going to run this as a quick test. And what this is going to do in real time, pull that information based on the particular IDs, based on the customers that I'm expecting out of SAP. And what Boomi does is run where that data is. So this is expecting my Atom, my integration engine to be where I can see my SAP environment. And as part of the integrations as well, you can see this data set so that way you know you're getting the correct information. Cirrus Ops come, comes back with a 297. And inside there, now we'll go back over to my accounts inside of FieldFX. In the field FX, you can now see the Cirrus Ops was just created inside this environment, all the way with that contact information, the 297, so it includes that SAP ID with that address information as well. Now, what we're doing on this integration side is we're picking just a couple fields inside of here, so that way we can see the data coming out of SAP, being translated and being loaded into the field FX account opportunity or the count details inside of Salesforce. So what I'm going to do is turn it over to Matt to be able to showcase how an invoice is created inside the environment of field FX. And then I'll come back and we'll be synchronizing that information with SAP and then back into Salesforce. Thank you, Eric. And so what I'm going to demonstrate today inside Field FX is picking up that brand new account that we received and starting the quote to invoice process. So you'll see that brand new account. I have no quote, no job details. So we're going to go ahead and start a new quote. Start filling out key information that we know about this customer, what price book we need to utilize, but also that the customer provided us certain details about the service that we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing wireline work today. What well, what well details we were informed about, what crew size I think we're going to need. And by simply filling out these details, saving that quote, we're going to drill into this specific quote and see that there's already items added. And that's coming from our CPQ module, where by answering certain questions about the work type and the services being performed and the details and the environment is going to drive items onto my quote ensuring that we're billing for everything that we should be able to and also pricing all those items exactly based on that customer location condition price book i can again add additional items directly from that price book i can edit these items i can pass these items through a workflow for internal or external approval i can generate customer facing documents to send out via email if i would like but what we're going to do is we're going to continue this workflow through field FX and saying we've won this work for Cirrus Ops. We're going to go ahead and create a job inside field FX off of this quote. And by simply creating this job, it's doing more than just saying, great, we have a quote, we've won it, start the job process. It's also going to populate planning details. What type of crew members and equipment do I need? The first ticket with the items on it for my field crew so they're not starting from scratch and eliminating 
you know, some key processes to speed up that invoicing. But as you see, I'm going to drill into my job here and already all the details have come over from that quote, customer price book, location details, what crew members that I type that I need, what wireline operator, general labor. So this is going to our schedule and dispatch crew where they can then start planning out our resources. What type of equipment do I need? And then of course, as I mentioned, the ticket that's been generated. And as I drill into that, you'll see that the items came over from the quote matching all of the right discount pricing metrics that we may have offered during that quoting process. So all of these details will show up here, allowing me to review and approve them or send it out to the field so they can perform their operations, give me the actual data that actually occurred, maybe mileage or what was the actual depth that we performed at, that might adjust some of the billables. But to continue this workflow here, we're gonna bypass our mobile application that works offline and collects these details and keep pushing this field ticket through. And so we're gonna just complete this ticket so we can create that invoice. We're gonna go through a couple different approval steps. You can see that you can have one to many approvals that allow this to be checked and verified before we get to the invoicing stage. So making sure that everyone has signed off on this, making sure all the details are accurate and then simply coming over to our invoicing module. And as you'll see, I started an invoice this morning where you could start one from scratch and add that ticket to that invoice and send it out the door. You could take an invoice, add more ticket and ticket items to it. So all of these details are collected here, allowing me to be able to concatenate multiple tickets into an invoice. I could split tickets into multiple invoices. And so what we're gonna see here is I have many, many items already on my invoice, but I'm looking for new items that were created today. And I can see here's my ticket that we just created. So I could select individual items. Maybe this customer wants me to split a ticket in half and put labor on one invoice and equipment and services on another. I could select all of my items and add them. So we're gonna just pick this entire ticket, get it added to this invoice and we'll close this out. And as this all gets added, it's checking and validating a four-way match to make sure that the book, the quote, the ticketed and the invoice price is validated and everything is correct, giving me the green light that we're good to go. But all this information has been collected here and not just the line items that we're billing the customer, but also attachments that may occur throughout the process that we wanna be able to pick up and package and send that over as the invoice package as it occurs. All these details are collected so that way we can submit this invoice to the customer and send this out via Boomi to many different directions it may go. And with that, I'll pass it back to Eric to explain how this data gets picked up and ultimately sent over to different environments. So going back over to that invoice that Matt was just talking about, we're looking at invoice 0019. In particular, just as of note, the SAP ID on this particular invoice is empty. That field is gonna be loaded once Boomi picks up this invoice and actually sends that over into the SAP sales order as a bi-directional synchronization between field FX, SAP, and then back into field FX. So we're gonna take a look at that particular process right now. This is now going into and pulling that information out of field FX, converting that into all of the information and all of the structure that is required for loading into a sales order inside of SAP and all the required fields. The results of that particular call coming back will include the sales document on the SAP side with all of its individual items, all of its details that are required for that particular sales order item object inside of the SAP side. And what this will do is return back for me the individual sales order identifier inside my SAP application. Here is the, the full structure at the very bottom. We do have the particular sales order that did get created and generated. So we'll be able to see my sales order is ending in 00 or 046. I'm gonna go into my SAP environment. We're gonna go back to the home environment to be able to even look at the specific sales order details. So I can go into looking at my sales order, ending in that 46 that we had just mentioned. And here are all of the invoice items that came across from that invoice ID 0019 inside the field access, our stabilizers, the vehicles, the, the mileage information. And what this is doing, as I mentioned, that bi-directional synchronization back into field FX. So we'll go back over to that same invoice that we were just looking at, refresh the screen, and it's gonna showcase 
that particular sales order ID, that 004 ending in 046. And at the same time, as we look at our individual accounts that got created earlier, if you remember, we saw the Cirrus Ops. We now also see that there is a new sales order as part of this data feed that came across. So really what we're utilizing is Boomi to be able to do an integration between field FX, SAP, or really any other downstream application, so that way we know and can realize and work with all of the different applications, all of the different data sets to be able to do application and data integration. Thank you.